What's good, YouTube? I'm back with another video, 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 video. Now, as you can see, I'm clearly off of my Mardi Gras trip, and I'm back to the original setting that we are now. And I wanted to talk about something. So, if you didn't know, um, we're going to be doing a review today. Now, a review is something that I normally don't do. I don't really review a lot of things a lot. I do reactions, you know, but no, today we are going to be doing a review and a story time is going to be maybe later. Now, I do want to let y'all know the last review I did was on my new phone, which I will talk about that in a second or in another video, actually. But we're going to be doing a review and what is it going to be on? Euphoria. Now, if you already know, Euphoria is one of the biggest top shows that are out right now. And I cannot wait to give you a review of the first and the second season. It's going to be so fun. Now, before we get into all this juiciness that has happened in this new season, I feel like y'all are here and y'all are ready to get into this review and hopefully not get spoiler alerted. And you haven't hit that subscribe button yet. And I'm going to need, need you to do that thing because that's a big problem from yours truly. Well, not from four years, truly. And I'm going to also need you to show some more support and hit that like button as well. That makes more sense, right? And also comment on who your favorite character is. I don't care who you think it is. Just go ahead and say something. And also, I'm going to need you to hit that notification bell so you'll never miss when I post a new video. You do not want to miss an upload. You do not want to miss these reviews, these reactions, these story times. They're all good. Trust me. And especially the vlogs. Trust me, you do not want to miss those. Anyway, with all that said and all that being out of the way, how about we go ahead and get into what Euphoria Season 1 and 2 has brought us. Now, I do want to clear up that Euphoria is an HBO original series. Now, because of that, it is not on the required streaming services that it's on. The only place that it's visible at is HBO Max, and a lot of people are just now starting to get it, which is something that's, you know, some, I've been at HBO Max even before Euphoria was popular because I've been watched Euphoria. I watched Euphoria the second it came out, and if you didn't know, Euphoria took a big, long two-and-a-half-year gap because it was released on the summer of 2019 and it came back at the beginning of 2022 and that was what upset a lot of fans because they've been waiting this long they got these two little mini episodes that really weren't shit but anyway let's get into the real details so euphoria stars well how about i just go ahead and get into the character right the characters so we're gonna go to our main character rue now rue is zendaya's main character so zendaya plays rue and she's awfully very good at it i mean not awfully but like she's really good at it but um yeah so basically rue is a teenage drug addict who's fresh from rehab ready to do drugs again so um the reason why she takes drugs and is a drug addict is because ever since her dad died she or like even before she had a lot of mental disabilities and you know had a lot of depression so she would take drugs to ease away the pain but then it became from a painkiller to a more deeper obsession with different like a different mentality basically which is where we bring in our next character lexi who is rue's supposedly best friend but also her guardian angel now rue keeps saying that lexi isn't her best friend even though we already know that lexi would never ever ever let anything happen to rue even if they gave her the chance and lexi and along comes lexi is her arrogant sister cassie now cassie is a teenage girl as well they're all teenagers i don't even know why i'm saying teenagers so anyway um Cassie is a girl who's been clowned basically for her whole high school career because there's a video on Pornhub or whatever, whatever. It's just a video of her having sex with a man, which is something that's not sitting right with her. So she's getting <clears throat> um, clowned and being talked about as in like a passy mood, like, oh, you're a pass, you're this, you're that. Yeah. And so she's dealing with all those things, but that doesn't stop her from being arrogant. And along we meet the way are the biggest dicks in my opinion mckay and nate 
Now, I'm going to go with McKay first because Nate, we'll wait for him. We'll wait for him. McKay is sort of, well, he's a black, like, upcoming football player who's dealing with a lot on his plate. And he ends up actually, oh, wait, I forgot to say, spoiler stamp, spoiler stamp. So, anyway, McKay is um, Cassie's supposed boyfriend or not her boyfriend. Well, they broke up, but I'm going to tell you why they broke up. It's because... Well, McKay is just more of that, you know, egotistical type of guy. He likes, you know, claiming what is his. And if something is displaying his image in the wrong light, he's just going to, like, slap the fuck out of it. He's not going to let anything destroy his image. So with that comes a lot of arrogance and all like, oh, he deserves to get this girl instead of this girl. And, you know, you know, dating different girls and, you know, having sex with different girls, you know. So it's just a lot going on with him. Um, they did write him out. I haven't seen him since maybe the beginning of season of season two. I haven't seen him. They wrote him out because he was basically unnecessary because, well, I'm not going to give you too much spoilers because we're getting into the characters, right? We'll get into the spoilers soon. Anyway, Nate. Woo, Nate. I need to take a, I need to take a sip of my Slurpee for this one. Nate. Okay, I do want to let y'all know that Nate has not had a very good childhood. And also, his dad fucking hates him. Who's Kyle Jacobs? Which we will get into next because he's a dick as well. So, anyway, Nate is basically the football player who thinks that he could fuck every girl he wants because every girl wants him. Which, of course, they're right. But he thinks that it's okay to, you know, gloat about fucking girls and being a fucking pig to other people. He degrades women. He's... Not even a feminist, which, of course, because he degrades women. He's just very disrespectful towards him. And also, he takes his anger out on him, like, fighting him, punching him, and stuff. And we can't have that in today's modern society. That's basically a wife beater. And we don't like that. We do not like Nate at all. Nate is one of the least favorite characters. And for some reason, all girls love him. And it's just so crazy because it's just like, they said that if Nate wasn't in the show or wasn't being Nate at all, they would fuck him. And yeah, no, no, I'm sorry. And anyway, let me go into Cal Jacobs. So Cal Jacobs is an interesting male. He has a very explorative sexuality. He has a weird obsession with fucking transgender people and also records himself doing it and records him on little discs just to keep to himself whenever he wants to watch it, which is very weird. And when Nate found those discs, well, hold on spoiler again i'm sorry it's just everything leads to something you know so anyway um cal jacobs is the owner of the town at that so it's just like he's setting the wrong representative of himself because well yeah anyway now that we're done with that we are going to get into who should we get into next who's another oh rue's good buddy fez or as you know his like her plug basically her plug so, Fez is um, Rue's friend and also plug, you know, hooks her up with drugs whenever she needs him, or, you know, this and that and the third, and along comes Fez is his little brother, Ashtray, and Ashtray is, well, yeah, his little brother, who's also a plug, so, you know, it's just that and there, and, yeah, that's pretty much, that's it for Fez, and I think all the characters... Oh, and Gia. Gia is Rue's little sister who's been dealing with her shenanigans for a while. And there's her mom. And then there's the, you know, the unnecessary info that we, you know, have. We don't need to have it. Oh, wait. Forgot one last person. Jules. Now, Jules is a transgender girl who's Rue's in love with. But at the same time, really not. Well, it's, it's a complicated relationship. So, um, Rue... We don't really know if she has a sexuality. She just has sex just to, you know, try it out. So she seems more of an asexual. So I really don't know what sexuality Rue is or if she likes this, if she likes that. But for some reason, she likes Jules. So, well, yeah, that's basically it. So anyway, um, now that all the characters have been sorted out, we're going to get some new characters jumping in and... Yeah, let's just get the review. So the first season, first season's always not perfect. Um, First seasons are always meant to be a work in progress, which means they're not going to really be good at all. 
in that matter, they're not gonna be good. I'm just being straight up. Like, I never met, or like, I never seen like a good first season. Now, the thing is, it seemed good at the time because, well, it was the first, like, it was the first, like, at that time, like, it was the only one, so the only one we could watch. So, yeah, of course, it's gonna be the greatest. But after, well, I'm gonna get, jump into season two later. But anyway, season one follows Rue and her drug ridden path. She's trying to get clean, but you know, she can't because she has to stay happy and has to stay stable. But um, a lot of things are, you know, interrupting with that factor. So she's basically like trying to balance drugs and trying to balance being clean or just like stop doing what she's doing and at the same time trying to feel happy and that's basically ruined the whole season except for Jules which Jules and Rue's like this part is shared so Rue and Jules they kind of met up together at this party and they fell in love with each other ever since they went to each other's houses they went to school together and Jules is trying to chase this one man who's a grown man who can't even do nothing with her because Jules is still a teenage teenage like she's just a teenager so it's not like they can really you know do anything at all without it being illegal so with that being in there she's still chasing after these guys and you know the thing is is that rue was actually trying to help her she was trying to say yeah this guy doesn't seem like good news you don't know what he could be bringing you don't know what's gonna happen at all and also jules is very self-centered um she kept leaving Rue. In fact, she left her at a train station knowing damn well that Rue could relapse at any moment. Relapse as soon as Jules left. That's when she relapsed. That was what the crazy part was. And that's basically it for Jules and... Well, actually, I also wanted to remember, Rue and Jules had a moment when they found out that the guy that Jules fucked was actually Cal Jacobs, who's a grown man and Nate's dad. So... That was already, you know, a big thing to deal with, especially in today's standards, because you never know, like, who's this and who's that. But at the same time, why would you be fucking some old ass dude? That's just weird. But anyway, why am I going ahead and encouraging this stuff? So anyway, I think that's now that that's it for um Jules and thing for season one, season one. I forgot to say season one. So then we move over to Cassie or no, Lexi. So, Lexi, we see her as more of an observer, but she's basically Cassie's sister, even though I feel like Lexi's sister is way better since Cassie's a bitch. But, um, Lexi, she's Rue's friend and guardian angel. She's basically watching her, telling her that she shouldn't do this, that she shouldn't do that. And she's more of an observer. She thinks that she's in a movie and she's running, like, the whole, you know, thing. She's running the whole life thing which is actually a very interesting topic of depersonalization which is something that euphoria touched with so well euphoria touched so well with mental health just because they understand like how hard that teenagers have it but like these grown people will never understand which is why i love euphoria the most anyway now we move over to mckay now mckay is um a football player a black male football player at that. So, of course, shit's going to be thrown at him and stuff. But at the same time, he wants to enjoy his college life. So, he ends up getting into a fraternity. And he has to do a couple of shit. And, you know, they do stuff. They have fun until it comes to a certain extent. And Nate ends up hooking him up with, um... What was I about to say? Cassie. Cassie. Well, we'll get into Cassie later. But eventually, Cassie and... McKay date and then he realized how hard it is to have a girlfriend and pursue his, and pursue his dream so he's basically juggling those options and he comes into a decision in the second season which I will get into later but that's it for um McKay for right now now we move on to Cassie so Cassie is very obnoxious and she thinks that the world owes her something it's because one she's had like a pretty rough like couple years especially with the video about her like you know having sex like, there's a video of her online about her having sex and that she's getting clowned about in school. So she's just going through all, like, the ups and downs of, you know, having her ass broadcast on internet. So it's very interesting and very sad to look at sometimes when you look at her emotional breakdowns. And she, for some reason, kind of likes Nate, which I honestly don't understand. But anyway, that's it for Cassie, I think, for that season. I haven't rewatched season one in so long, but anyway, um, who are we going to get into next? Fez. 
So, well, actually, I forgot a, a lot of characters in that fact. I forgot a lot of characters. Maddie. Maddie and Cat. Look at my dumbass Maddie and Cat. Well, actually, Cat's kind of irrelevant. I don't even know why she's there. But Maddie, let me get into Maddie. So, Maddie is comes in later in the season. Um, Maddie is kind of Nate's boyfriend. Not boyfriend, girlfriend. So, Nate's girlfriend that he likes tossing around and throwing around and doing a lot of crazy shit with, which is something that's not good. And she actually gets grabbed by the neck from her. Like, literally gets choked and, like, pushed against an RV. So, she's abused by Nate constantly. And he always backs it up with I love you, which is what makes her weak, even though I don't understand that. Because that's not fucking love. Anyway, so, she continues to hide the fact that she got abused by Nate continuously. And then the charges got dropped and, yeah that's that's basically it for maddie at this season though at this season maddie is well i'm gonna bring it to like you know the season one time so maddie is still with um nate at this point even though i don't understand why in her right mind that she would do that but anyway she's still with him now who was i about to get into hmm i low-key kind of forgot I think I got Fez, Fez, Fez and Ashtray. So wait, never mind. I think I already got into Fez. Is that him? I think that's him. But um, yeah. Anyway, now we move into season two. Now that we got the whole story already. Now we move into season two. That's when the shit starts cracking. So like season one was like the build up, and then season two was the finished product you know so rue is still dealing with her relapse she relapsed as soon as jules left her at that train in season one which i forgot to mention but you already know what it is so anyway um rue relapses and jules is nowhere to be found rue, so like rue goes into a deep depression she's like you know doing drugs and then she meets this boy named elliot now elliot is a drug like a drug addict so yeah he takes drugs too so he's just like rue except he knows how to handle his shit a lot other than rue because rue is having a lot of panic attacks and a lot of complications with her body because of those drugs and that's kind of a weird dynamic and at this point in time cassie ends up fucking me okay so if i like you know, spit out something. We already know for a fact that Maddie was still with Nate. Even though they were somewhat broken up, he was, she still had feelings for him and still wanted to do that. And you still don't fuck nobody's boyfriend when they have feelings for each other. That's just a big no-no in the girl world, which is something I'm just now starting to understand, which I, I honestly don't think is, but it's still wrong, you know? It's still wrong. So anyway, they're having that whole, whole ordeal and... They end up still fucking and fucking and fucking and fucking. And now we go back to Rue and Jules. Now, at this point, Jules is acting a fool and just making everything about her. She wants to fuck this person. She wants to fuck that person. She wants to deal with every person. And on top of that, she was like basically kind of fucking Elliot. She was fucking with Elliot while Rue was still thinking that she was only with her. So that kind of threw like a whole big thing again. And then Rue disappeared after having another, like, you know, what is it? Like a real, I don't think it was a relapse, but it was just, you know, her dealing with drinking alcohol and taking drugs, which is something that's a big no-no at all. So when they were trying to warn her, she dipped. And then um, Jules, well, Elliot reveals that Rue hasn't stayed clean since she met her. And then he was felt feeling bad for like lying and stuff. So she tells like, or he tells her about like the whole thing about what's been going on and then rue oh wait actually i'm getting too far up in the story without telling the other necessary things so um cassie and mckay were still dating and then they broke up because cass was pregnant and nate i mean not nate mckay didn't want nothing to do with that because you know he's having a whole life here like he's over here trying to figure out what he wants to do with his life while she over here getting pregnant and she doesn't think that that's right or like he doesn't think that that's right so he ends up breaking it off with her which is something that's you know a lot 
Or actually, not even he. It was her. Her. She was the one who broke up with him, which is something that was very heartbreaking for him. But at the same time, dude, you did it to yourself. You you really did it to yourself. I'm sorry. But um, that's basically it for them. So Cassie ends up fucking Nate. So that's when the whole thing did. I forgot to mention that detail. That would have fucked up the whole story for y'all, wouldn't it? But anyway, we get back into the story. So at this point in time... Jules and Elliot, they tell Rue's mom that she's been doing drugs and they ended up taking the stash that Elliot gave her, even though it wasn't really hers. It was Fez when, like, you know, Fez got raided. I forgot to say that. Fez got raided and Rue took the drugs. Now, Rue took the drug. Well, actually, it was Elliot. And so she gave it to Elliot. And Elliot gave it back to her. She's been hiding it in her closet ever since then. And so... Yeah, so, you know, Rue's basically acting like a full-on crackhead. Well, I should know. Um, I forgot to also mention, they flushed him down the toilet. They took the drugs and flushed him down the toilet so Rue wouldn't, you know, get, like, get to them, basically. She wouldn't get to them. So Rue's having a whole mental breakdown, a whole crackhead mental breakdown at that. She's acting like a crackhead. She's screaming, cussing at her mom, at her sister. He was, She was blaming her for, like, snitching, even though she was the one who really snitched. And she has this whole big Oscar oscar award winning like scene basically that y'all should really watch for yourselves just so you can understand i was literally jumping out my seat so anyway um she is acting like a crackhead and then she tells jules that she's dead to her because she didn't realize all the fucked up shit that jules done to her and she's going on and on about it talking about how she just loved being loved and that how she's so wrong for leaving her and stuff and yeah, it was it was a lot. I'm not gonna lie, it was a lot. So anyway, um, after that, <laughs> after that, so after that whole big thing, she actually um gets into a car and they take her to a hospital. But on their way to a hospital, she like gets out of the car and she just runs away because she just doesn't want to go to the hospital. So then they have this whole big chase scene where the episode is basically only about her. So Rue ends up going to Cassie and Lexi's house where all of her friends are at, including Maddie. And she gets on the stairs and Rue's mom is still trying to convince her to come with her. And then she ends up spilling the beans that Cassie has been fucking Nate in front of Maddie. So Maddie gets upset and she chases Cat Cassie all the way up the stairs and... Rue just dips, like, she's just gone, so she runs away, and then I think she runs off to Fez's house, and Fez ends up kicking her out because she wanted to take this old lady's drugs when she really didn't need them, so after Fez kicked her out, she decided to go to, go break in, into this married couple's house, so she breaks into this married couple's house and steals some shit, and then she runs out, and the shit that she stole was, like, thousands of dollars in jewelry and even a thousand dollars at that. So then she goes to her other plug's house where she wants to get like drugs to, you know, release the pain because, well, she's going through re with. <laughs> she's going through withdrawal right now. I'm sorry, that word is just so hard to say withdrawal. So anyway, she's going through withdrawal right now and she needed something to, you know, help the pain, you know, pass on by. So when she did that, um, the plug decided to actually help her. And clean her up and make her, you know, feel a little bit better by giving her shots of morphine. So when she gave her shots of morphine, Rue wakes up in a bed where there's a bunch of men that were supposedly supposed to have sex with her to pay off her debt. She ends up escaping that place, luckily, and ends up going back to her mom's house to... <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm sorry, I can't speak right now. Um, continue withdrawal. Now, while this is all happening, Maddie is still trying to keep her calm and trying not to beat Cassie's ass. Like, trying not to beat Cassie's ass. And Cassie is having a full-on meltdown just because she got caught fucking Nate. And everybody's telling her that she's wrong and that you don't fuck somebody's best friend. Or, like, you don't fuck somebody's boyfriend. And then you want to continuously say that they're not dating. But that doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. So, she's having this whole selfish moment. She ends up... Well, actually, I think I forgot to mention this, but a few episodes before, she got into a whole bathing suit just to make Nate jealous and, like, to get back with her, even though, yeah, it was just, like, back and forth kind of thing. So, um, Nate's, ma well, not, um, Nate, 
Cassie's, well, Cassie just wants to be with Nate, and Maddie's mad at Nate. So, Maddie also took a disc of his private property, and it was about his dad having sex with a bunch of underage girls. So, Nate goes to her house and threatens to kill himself right in front of Maddie, which is very traumatic, in order to get the case back, or to CD back. So, she ends up, he ends up getting a CD back, trying to be with her, but it's not, no. It's not. So Maddie has a self-realization like, yeah, it's not it's not it. This isn't it. So that's basically it for the episode. Then next episode. So next episode, we really see a bond between Lexi and uh, a bond between Lexi and um Fez. So Lexi and Fez, we see a very unique chemistry between them because they're opposites but they it's obvious that they like each other so we're basically seeing this whole thing progress and fez actually helped lexi do a play do a play and so when the play was there everybody went there but they didn't know what they were jumping into they just thought lexi's play was something for show and Fez is still at the house, but we'll get into him later. But anyway, um, Lexi's play is basically demonstrating about how her life with Rue was and also how her life with her sister was and her friends. So it's just an obvious, you know, conspiration of like how everybody is. And they did all the characters, but of course they changed the names. And the play was very, very diverse. So... Um, that was basically it, and then we go back to Fez, so Fez, um, is at the house, and she's, and he's actually getting dressed up for Lexi's play, like, he's getting dressed up, he's making sure this and that is good, this and that, and then he ends up getting, well, he doesn't get stopped, but, um, the play stops there as he's about to leave, so anyway, um, when he asks everything is all good, we cut to the next scene where we... Finish off the episode greatly. So Lexi exposed Nate in her play and was basically telling everybody in that audience the shit that he did. But of course, masking his name, of course, which I honestly don't understand. I would have said the real name. But anyway, he, she was just putting him on blast about every single fucking thing that he did. So that was that. And yeah, that's basically how the episode ended. Nate walked out of the theater just mad talking about it was homophobic. And about how he... And then he ended up breaking up with Cassie. Like, he ended up breaking up with Cassie. So, when that when that's over, um, the scene fades into Cassie looking out the window, basically huffing and puffing. And then we go into the next episode. So, um, in the next episode, um, Fez, we're left at that same part where... Oh, wait, never mind. No, we're not at that part yet. But anyway... Um, Lex, not Lexi, um, why did I say Lexi? Cassie, I mean Cassie. That's what I meant earlier, Cassie. So, um, Nate broke up with Cassie right there. So, Cassie is just sitting there breathing heavy at the door, and then she ends up walking out the door and ends up storming onto the stage and ruining Lexi's play, talking about, oh, I live this life, you didn't, you were just observing, you just judging me that's the only reason why you can't judge me is because you've been watching my life get fucked up and didn't do anything to help me and she was just going off saying shit like that and then maddie maddie was getting mad and so she screams at cassie talking about yeah you did something wrong you fucked my boyfriend and you're the fucking cunt and so they were basically going back and forth and then when as cassie is going to check lexi telling her that she was going to beat her ass um, a person ends up imitating Cassie, humping a horse, talking about I love fucking everything, which was shown in the first season. So that's the only way you get that. So Lexi basically clowned her and then Cassie ends up beating up the actor's ass. And then Maddie ends up pulling Cassie away and beating her ass as she should have in the fucking um, episode where she found out that she was fucking Nate. Now, that was one, that was one of the, like, late... Late, but also good to watch. I loved watching Maddie beat up Cassie's ass. Ooh, it's just giving me, it's pumping blood in my. So, um, Maddie runs off the stage chasing Cassie and beating her ass continuously. And so now, now we go into Fez and the situation. So we already know that Ashtray, um, 
Fesco's little brother, he has a little violence problem. He feels like everything needs to be solved with violence. So, um, he already no noticed that something was wrong with him. So, after Fez asks, was everything all right? Ash, like, grabs a knife and just, like, stabs him in the throat and just letting him bleed. But, of course, like, Fez is trying to, like, you know, protect his little brother. He doesn't want his little brother to go to jail just because of him. And so... Yeah, that was it. And then we go back to the play, and it was telling more about Rue's life and about how Lexi's experience was with. And then she was also crying about how she thinks that she should stop the play just because, you know, it was kind of, you know, messed up. And so, but the show must go on so the play continued. And then we go back to the whole thing. So Ash decides to grab a bunch of guns and a bunch of ammo and a bunch of shit and locks himself in the bathroom, leaving Fez out there. And he was going to, you know, protect Fez and himself with a bunch of guns. So SWAT busts in and, you know, throwing smoke bombs, keeping everybody on the ground. And Ashtray lets out a huge round of bullets, basically. A round of bullets that just, you know, shoot hopefully the soldiers and the cops as well. So she, he's basically like just shooting, shooting, never stopping. And the SWAT team actually ends up, you know, blowing up the whole bathroom. Not, like, shitting or anything, but, you know, shooting. Like, so they're basically shooting everything. And Ashtray, they bust into the bathroom, and Ashtray is just lying there on the floor. Now, of course, they think he's dead. But little do they know, Ashtray got back up and ends up killing the cop right in front of him, which was very stupid. Well, why do I keep saying cop? It was a soldier. Meanwhile, Fez is literally screaming his name and telling him, don't kill him, that he and telling them that he's a fucking kid and stuff. And I was just like, he is just a savage, honestly. He's a savage. So, yeah. That's basically happening. Like, Ash, not even that. Like, bro, Ashtray just always shows extreme violence. And he continued to shoot people. And Fez is trying to protect him. But it was eventually too late. Because after Fez killed that, I mean, not after Fez, after Ashtray killed that cop, not that cop, soldier, Jesus Christ, I'm getting so mixed up because it's just so recent. It's hard to comprehend it all. So after Ashtray ends up killing that soldier, all we see is a red dot hit his forehead. And then the camera pans to Fez and all we hear is a gunshot and a body dropping, which means Ashtray is dead. So Fez is left there bleeding, but they eventually like pick him up and take him to the hospital because he actually ended up getting shot in the process. And... Now we go back to the play where the play finally finishes and everybody's telling them how the play actually, like Rue actually went up to Lexi and said the play actually helped her look at herself and not hate herself, which was something that was very sentimental. But at the same time, it was okay, kind of weird to say. Rue stayed clean that whole time, especially after Jules tried to get back with her, especially after the fuck up shit that Jewel did, she tried to get back with her. And you know, Rue wasn't fucking with that. You know what, fool me once you're well i guess you know what the saying is so anyway so rue walks off and just stays clean you know having a good old time and then we never see fez again for the rest of that episode and then um nate i forgot one more thing before we ended off that episode nate exposed his dad to the cops and got him arrested because i forgot to also mention nate's dad walked out of the house after talking a whole bunch of shit about Nate, about his wife, talking about how he fucked this and fucked that, and that he accepts himself for who he is, and if that makes him a bad person, then he's gonna leave and be himself where he's comfortable to be. So he left the house and basically kind of divorced. Yeah. I'm filming a video. I'm filming a video. Okay. I'll talk to you later, though. Anyway, so, um... Um... What was I about to say? Um... Yeah, so exposed his dad, he got arrested, and that was it for Nate. So Nate kind of felt better. I don't know why he felt better, but he did. But anyway, I, th um, oh wait, never mind. There was something else that happened at the end, but I just can't remember. Yeah, something happened, but you know I can't remember. So we'll get, well, we'll get to that maybe later, maybe in a season three review. So anyway, that was it for Euphoria season one and two. Season one and two was very wild. And I feel like the third season, we're going to be waiting until 2024 because, well, you already know how long they love to take on this shit. So, yeah. Anyway, 
Guys, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button. Also, watch Euphoria streaming now on HBO Max seasons one and two. Fifteen ninety nine a month for ad free. Um, not fifteen ninety nine. Fourteen ninety nine a month for ad free and ten no nine ninety nine a month for ads. So, if you want to pay an extra five for ads, for no ads, I mean, yeah, go ahead and do that. Five less. Go ahead. <coughs> 10 and 15. I should have just said 10 and 15. So 10 and 15 dollars to, you know, stream Euphoria however way you want to. It's up to you. Um, I can't wait to see what's going to happen in this season three. Anyway, guys, I love you guys so much and I will see you guys in the next video.